Hey guys, my name's Dale, this is Think Fact, and welcome to another episode of If Tank. 10 interesting facts that almost nobody knows. So, let's learn something. 2015 is going to be a big year for Pluto. With NASA's space probe New Horizons set to fly by and take the first ever clear photos of Pluto. That said, Pluto and its largest moon Charon both have a very special feature. A single day on Pluto is 6 Earth days and 9 hours. A single day on Pluto's moon Charon is also 6 days and 9 hours. And coincidentally enough, the amount of time it takes Charon to do a revolution around Pluto and their shared berry center is 6 days and 9 hours. What this means is Pluto and Charon have the same face always pointing towards each other. Kind of like how we always see one side of the moon, but imagine if it was just one side of the Earth always seeing one side of the moon. But just imagine how different history would be if that was actually the case with Earth. The moon just seemingly always above us, or a certain side of the planet. And if the Earth wasn't destined to be destroyed by the Sun, eventually the same thing will happen to the Moon and the Earth. Human language is so amazingly diverse. Not only do we have thousands upon thousands of different languages, things including sign language, but we also have unique sounds included, like clicks and many other things. But did you know there is a language completely constructed around whistling? Known as El Cibo, it is isolated to the tiny island of La Gomera in the Canary Islands, which is a part of Spain. El Cibo imitates the phonetic sounds of Spanish, though it should be noted that El Cibo's system itself is centuries older than Spanish has been on the island. It was initially created and still used to communicate with people across large valleys and mountains, which is very common on La Gomera. Here are some examples. Una botella de vino tinto. Blanco. Con gas. Now, El Cibo is not meant to be an intimate language by any means, but instead something that is spoken out loud for everybody to hear, typically announcing things. It is formed by just using two vowels and four consonants, and through a complex system of reduction, users can completely understand what each other are talking about. And interestingly enough, there's a place in Turkey that has also created their own language through whistling that is similar to El Cibo. Olingodynamic is an effect which metal ions are deadly to things like viruses, bacteria, living cells, molds, and many other microbial beings. Materials such as silver, copper, gold, lead, zinc, iron, and even aluminum are very deadly to them. The strongest of them being silver and copper and mixtures of the two with other materials, such as zinc and copper making brass. This literally means that objects made out of these materials self-sanitize due to this effect. Some examples being silver spoons, silver jewelry, brass doorknobs, brass instruments, copper piping and copper railings, and many more. All of them are effective at their own rate and have been recommended for places where sanitation is important, such as hospitals. Though it should be noted some people take this very seriously and eat things like silver because of this effect and they end up turning themselves blue. So let's just save this stuff, these materials, for the objects that would be best suited for them. Now, people commonly associate hyenas with dogs, mostly because of their appearance and their pack-like behavior. But contrary to popular belief, hyenas are actually more closely related to cats than they are dogs. Cats and dogs are both a part of the order Carnivora. From there on there are suborders such as Feliforma, meaning cat-like carnivoras, and Caniforma, which means dog-like carnivoras. Hyenas are Feliforma because just like cats and all Feliformas, they have a double-chambered auditory bola in the middle parts of their inner ear. This is a major cause for division because all the Caniformas, such as dogs and bears, have a single chamber. This almost makes certain that cats and hyenas, along with mongooses and meerkats, all share a common ancestor that is directly responsible for their existence. And it so happened to be different than the animal that made possible all the canine formas, such as bears, dogs, and even walruses. And yes, walruses are actually canine formas. 
For a person to be considered in a coma, they must be unconscious and unable to respond to stimuli for at least six hours. That said, the record holder for the longest time anybody has ever been in a coma belongs to Edwarda Obara. She ended up falling into a coma in 1970 at the age of 16 due to complications with her diabetic medicine and having pneumonia. She would go on to remain in a coma until 2012. She was in a coma for 42 years, dying at age 59, having never woken up. She outlived her mother by five years who cared for her her entire time she was in a coma. And it should be noted that people in coma's bodies can still move and open their eyes and mouth, even though they themselves are still unconscious and unable to respond to stimuli. But I just want you to imagine if she did wake up, being someone who went into a coma at the age of 16, all of a sudden waking up 42 years later at the age of 59. I would find that truly terrifying. Cricket chirping to many people can be rather soothing or absolutely obnoxious. Little do some people know that most species of crickets are actually making music together with remarkable harmonies. And we can hear this when we slow down the music and it sounds just like a massive, beautiful orchestra. Jim Wilson was the first person known to discover this, and after recording crickets at a normal speed, he ended up slowing it down and accidentally coming across this. Here is a quick sample, and it should be said that there are two tracks playing, one with crickets playing at normal speed, and the slowed down version of the crickets. If you're interested in hearing the whole song, please click the annotation or check out the description below. Now the tallest trees in the world are redwood trees, and that's pretty common knowledge. But do you know what the smallest trees in the world are? Most people would incorrectly assume it's a bonsai tree, though it should be noted that bonsai trees are an art form and not an actual species. The actual smallest trees in the world are known as dwarf willows. Being related to their larger willow cousins, dwarf willows can reach a max height of six centimeters or two and a half inches. And those are the tall ones. This adaptation has helped them live in Arctic and subarctic climates in the North Atlantic. And I just want to point out that this picture is actually of a forest by definition. Hello Kitty was first introduced to the world in 1974, being created by Yuko Shimizu for the Sanrio company. Hello Kitty grew to be extremely popular in the 1990s and still remains popular in China today. That said, contrary to what most people think, Hello Kitty is actually not a cat at all. She's a little girl. A human. This was pretty much kept a secret for almost 40 years until Christine Yana was working on a Hello Kitty retrospect for the Japanese American National Museum. She ended up sending her notes over the exhibit for approval to the company. They loved everything except for the fact that Christine Yano addressed Hello Kitty as a cat. I can't possibly imagine how she came to that conclusion. Their response according to Yano was, Hello Kitty is not a cat, she's a cartoon character. She is a little girl, she is a friend. But she is not a cat. She is never depicted on all fours. She walks and sits like a two-legged creature. She does have a pet cat of her own, however. Its name is Charmy Kitty. So there is something you probably thought you'd never have to think twice about. The creation of the World Wide Web, in my opinion, is one of the most revolutionary things to ever happen to us in history and it made the internet a lot more useful. The creator of the World Wide Web, Tim Bernsley, believe it or not, is also the creator of the first website ever. And this is the URL to that website, the first website. It was created on August 6, 1991, and it served the purpose of explaining the World Wide Web project and how to help people make their own websites and web pages. Though, as of today, it is no longer accessible. Sadly, though, nobody ever thought of documenting what the original website looked like before updating. It. The earliest version we do have, though, is from 1992, and if you're interested in seeing what it looks like for yourself, please click the link in the annotation or look in the description below. Trained Guide Dogs for the Blind was arguably an accidental idea. During early World War I, German doctor Gerhard Stalling and his beloved dog were walking around a military hospital with a soldier who was blinded during battle. 
When Stalling was called for a moment into one of the buildings, he left his dog and the soldier outside together, only to come out and notice they were gone. Eventually, when he found them at the other end of the grounds, he noticed that his untrained dog was actually leading the soldier, and was exhibiting behaviors that showed as if he was seemingly watching out for him. This made Dr. Stalling wonder how much better a trained dog could help blind people. He went on to explore ways to train dogs to be reliable guides, and in April 1916, he would go on to be the first person to create a school for dogs for the blind in Oldenburg, Germany. It wouldn't go on to be popular outside of Germany until Dorothy Eustace, an American dog breeder who was living in Switzerland, would go on to take interest in them. And she would go on to create, in 1929, The Seeing Eye, the oldest existing guide dog training school in the entire world. And thanks to her, she popularized it around the world. And that is 10 interesting facts that almost nobody knows. My question for you guys is, which one or ones did you find the most interesting? I personally really liked them all, but I'd have to say my favorites were the crickets and the language El Cibo. And with all that said and done, my name's Dale, this is Think Fact, and remember, never stop learning. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe for more. For the videos over the facts and thoughts that almost everybody missed.